you know that the two sides of the brain are, in general, are kind of responsible for two different kinds of thinking, right? So what are they? What's one side? Abstract. More abstract, creative. What's the other side? Concrete. Concrete, objective, etc. Which side is the concrete side? The right side. It's actually the left side. It's kind of counterintuitive, but the right brain, in general, is responsible for creativity, image, color, music, dimension, emotion, and check this out, long-term memory. Left brain, logic, reading, listening, calculation, analysis, sequence, short-term memory. Part of what Gar Reynolds and others are saying is use both sides of your brain in creating a presentation and appeal to both sides of your audience's brain. A little color, a little bit of dimension can really enhance your presentation. It, the picture's worth a thousand words. It really, it, it can convey a lot quickly, and it can stick in your audience's mind in a way. Now, again, you've got to be careful with how you do this. But uh, appeal to that side of the brain, as well as this side. You know, again, if we're just reading or listening, uh, that's one thing. But let's, let's appeal to both sides of the brain by incorporating some of this stuff. Now, I wanted to share with you another world that understands this right here. And that's the world of advertising. Think about how the world of advertising has evolved from the time I was your age to now. There's the first magazine ad for a PC. Now, would you see this ad in today's magazines? Of course not. Why? It's too wordy. It's too wordy. It asks the audience to read all these words. It sort of it has every single specification here as if that needed to be in the ad. To me, there was sort of a lack of understanding about how the audience was consuming this. So what do you, what's a, a typical PC ad today? Now, you might say it's dumbing it down. I don't think so. I don't think it's dumbing it down. I think it's recognizing a more effective way to reach the audience. Do we need to know all these specs? Maybe. But that probably is something you're going to figure out later on your own doing research. Right now, if I'm leaping through a magazine, that's going to be a lot more effective. It's going to catch my attention. It's, it uses color. It's simple. It catches my attention. There's the ultimate, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of simplifying a message but making it impactful. So what am I saying? I'm not saying that PowerPoint is advertising, but I am saying, and I think Gar Reynolds is saying in Presentations In, that we can take a page from the, the, the book of advertising and realize how people receive information. We can impact our audience with some color, with some simple message, and then let them listen to us. Okay? So let's finish up by taking a look at some more effective slides. Something just a, I wanted to give you some samples that I think can, can show, illustrates this new way of doing things. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. This, I think, works really well when you have a, a quote, an image. Uh, you know, here's the icon, Einstein, of, of intelligence in the West, anyway. And then he's saying something like, let's make everything as simple as possible. Sometimes these can be very effective slides to kind of create a mood in the audience or whatnot. Now, remember this slide earlier? This comes from Presentations In. Here's Gar Reynolds' redo of that slide. So much more effective. The message is boiled down quickly. You see the key message at the top. It's got, it's got the sushi over here, which sort of adds a little bit of dimension to it. And it's got the key numbers here, the highlighted fact that it's amazing that you look at obese, obesity rates around the industrialized nations of the world, Japan's only 3.2%. That was the point of this. You wouldn't really get that from here. You might, but you'd have to dig in and really read it and try to figure out what's going on. This is high impact, you got it quickly, and now I can talk about that. I sort of got your attention. Does that make sense? This is one that I like to show when I'm, uh, I'm talking about the Aggie Honor Code and plagiarism to my students. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. And, and Buffett's, Buffett's picture here, uh, he's the one who said this. Uh, again, these kind of slides can be very effective can convey an awful lot quickly. You don't have to study that. You got it. Right? My, uh, a group of my students were doing a presentation on the Odwalla crisis uh, when the juice company had 
E. coli in the juice, and they're sort of held up now as being one of the um, paradigm examples of effective crisis communication. They really dealt with it well. And they were giving a, a report on that. And so they set it up just talking about this, and then they rolled this bullet in, and they talked about that. They rolled this bullet in, and they talked about that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Audience is completely with them. They haven't packed all their information in the slide. That's what they said. But this just orients the audience. It's clean. It, you know, it's, it's aesthetically pleasing. It works so much better. For your, some of your presentations, I do encourage you to think about when you're showing financial data or showing relationships, stay away from the 3D and the shading and all the, inf the superfluous information. Try to make it simple and impactful like this so that your audience really gets it. Now, sometimes you can't make it that simple. Sometimes you have to put more information up there and, and give your audience a little time to consume it. But in general, if you want to, if this person's making the point that there's been this dramatic increase in widgets produced in 2010, this gets it. High level, impact, high impact, quick, quickly consumed by your audience, and then you talk about it. Okay, here's a pop quiz. You ready? Name this country. US. <laughs> Survey says US. <laughs> I, I, I like to finish my presentations with that just because I think it's fun. It really shows how quickly the world is changing. I mean, this is this is a mind blower, isn't it? That wasn't that long ago. The older I get, the the, the less long ago it feels. Uh, 1900. Uh, but also to show you uh, again, illustrate for you PowerPoint how you can keep your audience with you. You kind of build the suspense. That's why, again, why I don't hand out my slides ahead of time. It's, it's in the moment. We're together. And, you, and it's a powerful tool, and you can use it that way. And the world is changing very quickly. This comes from something called Shift Happens. It went viral a couple of years ago. If you, you can look that up, Shift Happens. And it had all this kind of frenetic music playing and then giving you all these facts about how quickly the world's changing. So uh, to wrap up, ask why we deliver this message. Why, why deliver this message in person anytime you're standing up in front of a group? Ask yourself this question. Make sure to communicate with clarity. Speak naturally. Don't speechify. Give your answers up front. Show both enthusiasm and professionalism. Practice, practice, practice. With respect to PowerPoint, avoid talking over dense slides. It doesn't work. There's a much better way to do it. Remember that you, not the slides, you are the presentation. Talk to your audience, not the slides. Keep your slides zen. Keep them simple and clean and consider rolling in the bullets. I encourage you to dedicate yourself to improving your communication practices. It's really something that's going to help you in your business career. And the time is now. Don't wait. Start doing it now. Start thinking, have your own plan. How am I going to get, improve my presence in the world? How am I going to improve the way I interact with people? Be cultivating that right now. So thank you. Questions? I know I've gone over a little bit, but do you have any, anything you want to talk about? Any questions in particular? Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Ah, there's a question. Yes, um, a lot of the people who we're going to be talking to coming up know a lot about the material that we're yes. going to present on. So how do we go about keeping it simple but not too simple to where it's just things that they knew when they were our age? Yeah. Well, for one thing, they will appreciate you keeping it simple. Okay. The, uh, there's really that tendency, I think, in this particular scenario of wanting to get credit for everything by just packing it all in there. Mm -hmm. But if you can kind of cut to the chase and start with a high-level, summarized version of where, where you landed, where you concluded, there's something really impressive about having information on slides that you don't show. And then if they ask questions, you can flip to that slide, like kind of in an addendum section or something. And it's like, oh, wow, these guys really did their homework. But I think this audience will appreciate it if you start off at a high level, give them the answer, make it very clear. Here's where we got to, and here's how. And then, then kind of let, you, you can't just stop there. Obviously, you've got to flesh that out. But you don't need to give them everything. If you just restrain yourself a little bit, have it waiting in the wings so that if you get a question, there's something really impressive, especially if you have like a hyperlink. 
on a slide where you go, bang, there it is. Oh, that question? Yeah, I got a slide on that. Let's talk about it. Okay. A couple things to add on that as well is if you put stuff in your presentation, the board members are going to expect you to know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. If they feel any weakness, you know, it's, it's almost like a predator feeling weakness or a dentist digging out a cavity. When a dentist finds a soft spot in your tooth, they start digging around and then they don't quit until they've really dug it out. And they'll do that with you. They'll, they'll leave, let you hang yourself. And they're not trying to be mean, but they are teaching you a lesson. If you aren't sure about that, ask Josh Groner last year. Uh, Mark May from ConocoPhillips let him uh, basically dangle in the wind for about 10 minutes of Q&A. And each time Josh would say something, Josh would, Mark would push him further and further down. Fi finally, Josh just threw his hands up in the air, literally like that one. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Yeah. And you don't want to get to that point. You want to, you want to make sure that you're completely comfortable with everything you have on your presentations. They don't expect you to be as smart as they are, to have seen as right. much as they have, or to do or know as much as they do or know. What they want is that you present what you did, you present it well, you go through the thought process of what you went through, and at the end, they're able to say, with my limited knowledge, with my limited understanding of what's going on, here's the decision or the choice that I would recommend the company make or may have made at that point in time last April. It's very fair for you to go back and pull up the slide that says, now that it's August, look what I look what's happened. I was right, I was wrong. And there's no, you know, there's no shame in being wrong because it's very easy to sit there and say, I was wrong, here's why. Here's what I didn't know, here's what I didn't take into account. Here's the fact that I'm 21 years old figuring this out for the first time and I'll, I'll pick on one of the students that's not in here, I won't say any names, but he came up with his trade strategy and went to his board member and the board member said, wow, I put on the exact opposite position. He goes, well, should I change it? He goes, no. That's your thought process and that's your decision and your choice. I may be wrong, you may be right, so you keep what you feel comfortable with and as long as you can defend it and as long as you can defend the rationale and justify the numbers you came up with, you're fine. That's what they're looking for. Okay? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck to you. By the way, one